Well, you know, every time I go to Publix, uh, I usually go down every single aisle, but there's one aisle in particular that I rarely go down, and that's this aisle right here. Take a look. I call it the H-word aisle. You know what I'm talking about? The H-word you're not supposed to say in church, right? (laughs) Hallmark, right? Yeah. I call it the, the Hallmark aisle because it's filled with cards. And the reason I don't go down it a lot is because I don't have to buy greeting cards on a regular basis. And it turns out that not a lot of people actually do. Because every time I go past this aisle, there's like nobody in it. But friends, on the Friday and Saturday before Mother's Day, all of a sudden it's like everybody in St. Petersburg is in this aisle, right? I mean, I passed by it yesterday afternoon. It was insane. I mean, people were like standing and fighting over cards. I mean, the the deli section was empty. The produce section was empty. The beer aisle was empty. I mean, the, the pizza and ice cream aisle was empty. Everybody was in this aisle buying cards for their mom. In fact, did you know that, that Mother's Day is the number three holiday for buying cards? You know what the first two are? The first one's Christmas. Anybody want to take a guess what number two is? It's Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, you have Christmas, Valentine's Day, and then Mother's Day. So many cards are bought for this day. And you know, if you went down the Hallmark aisle this past week at Publix, which many of you probably did, you probably saw that half the aisle was filled with Mother's Day cards. And what's cool is that it's not just filled with cards for for birth moms, but it also has cards for grandmothers and and stepmoms and adoptive mothers and mothers-in-law and and mother figures, women who have stepped in and served as a mom to somebody who maybe had a mom who couldn't be in their life. I mean, when you stop and think about it for a second, there are so many wonderful women that we recognize and celebrate on this day. In fact, if you open up many of these cards, that's the main message, that today we celebrate our moms and all that they mean to us. And you know, I imagine that for some of you here today, if you have a mom who's currently in your life, you're probably doing something today to celebrate your mom. Maybe you're going out to eat later today, or maybe you're gathering together as a family. Maybe your, your mom is living far away, and you're going to give her a call or FaceTime with her. I mean, there's so many different ways that you and I can celebrate our mom. But you know what, here's what we're going to talk about today. As followers of Jesus, not only do we celebrate our moms on a day like Mother's Day, but we are commanded by our God to also do something for them every single day. In fact, do you remember the fourth commandment that God gave to his people? Take a look. He said, honor your father and your mother. Now, notice it doesn't say honor your father and your mother on Father's Day and Mother's Day. Instead, the implication is that we are to honor our parents every single day. And remember, this isn't like just some helpful advice on how to have a good relationship with your parents. This is a command by God in terms of how we are to interact with the people in our life. In fact, take a look at this. In, in, Hebrews, or in, in, in uh, Exodus chapter 20, the Hebrew word for honor carries this idea of a physical heaviness. It means to acknowledge someone as weighty or important. In other words, to honor your mother is to hold her in high esteem, that you are to live your life in such a way that when somebody peers into your world, they can see that your mom is an important person in your life. You see, today on this Mother's Day, we celebrate our moms, but at the very same time as followers of Jesus, we are called to honor our mothers every single day. And so you know what, this morning, we're going to take a look at some simple, powerful, practical ways that you and I can honor the mothers in our life. In other words, if God has commanded us to hold our moms in high esteem, this morning we're going to talk about what that looks like on a daily basis. Now, for the moms and the mother figures who are here today, I pray that you are encouraged by this message because the things we're going to be talking about today, you have done these things for us as your children all your life. And this morning, I'm going to challenge us, the children, to actually do these same things for you. And then for the children and the, uh, the, 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 the adult children here today, I'm going to challenge you with five different ways that you can honor your mom every single day. And friends, the hope is that you won't forget these things after today or you'll forget them after a week, but the hope is that you will take some time to write these down and incorporate them into how you interact with your mom. Because, you know, I believe as an American culture today, we have forgotten what it's like to honor our mother and our father. What does that mean? We're going to talk about that today, and my prayer is that these five things will help provide us with a roadmap for how we get back to living out the fourth commandment that our God has given to us. Amen? All right, let's take a look at these five things today. The first way that you can honor your mother 
is to love her, and, and specifically to express that love in what you say and what you do. You know, throughout our lives, our moms have told us and shown us that they love us. Whether they, it's saying, I love you, or whether it's, it's rocking us as a baby, or holding us at the doctor's office, or embracing us as an adult when we're facing a difficult issue, our parents have told us and shown us that they love us. Now, friends, let me ask you this morning, how often do you tell your mom that you love her? Or how about this, when's the last time you simply just said out loud, mom, I love you? You know, I think sometimes it's difficult for you and I because we're not quite sure what to say. It's like, well, how do I express my love to the woman who has loved me so incredibly well? I mean, I mean, what exactly do I say? Because at the end of the day, I'm not sure that I can articulate everything that I feel about my mom. But you know what? Here's what I want to encourage you this morning. Instead of getting tripped up on what to say and how to say it, the next time you feel something, just say it. For example, if you go over to your mom's house and she, she makes you one of your favorite meals, just say it. Mom, thank you so much for making me my favorite meal. I love you and I appreciate you. In other words, don't let a Hallmark greeting card be the only way you tell your mom that you love her. Tell her with your words. Now, the other way that you can show your love to her is by showing her with affection. Friends, have you ever noticed that as we get older, we tend to hug our moms less and less, right? You know, our two-year-old daughter, Haley, she, she loves hugging Elaine. Like, she'll go up multiple times a day and just wrap her arms around Elaine's like She loves hugging Elaine. Now, our six-year-old, Abigail, she does not hug Elaine as much as Haley does because she's getting to that age where it's a little too cool to be hugging your mom all the time. You know what I'm saying? You see, I want to challenge you this morning, in addition to telling your mom that you love her, show her with affection. Give her a hug. In fact, if, if you have a mother figure next to you here today, go ahead and give her a hug now. My mom's here today. I'm going to go and give her a hug. You give your mom a hug right now. You see, friends, one of the ways that we can honor our mother is to love her and to express that love in what we say and what we do. Amen? Here's the second way that we can do and honor our mother is to listen to her. You know, our moms have been listening to us our entire lives. They listen to us and we cry and scream as babies. They listen to us and we cry and scream as adults, right? <laughs> they listen to us and we articulate our wants and our needs. They listen to us when we complain and, and they are, we argue with them. They listen to us when we lie and make up excuses. They listen to us when we get into trouble. They listen to us when we don't know what to do. They listen to us when we're excited and happy. I mean, they listen to us when we tell them what's going on in our world. If you think about it, our moms have been listening to us for our entire lives. And friends, because our moms have spent their lifetimes listening to us, it's very easy for you and I to forget that our moms have thoughts. Our moms have feelings. They have opinions and dreams and joys and concerns. In other words, we forget to also listen to our moms. As many of the moms know here today, moms go through a lot of changes throughout their lifetime. And sometimes they need somebody who can, that they, they can talk to, that they, who can encourage them and support them and, and help them through the difficult situation that they're facing in front of them. You know, when my grandma was in a nursing home, almost every single day, my parents would go and sit with her and listen to her because they understood that she needed people that she could talk to. And you know what? What better people to listen to her than her own son and her daughter-in-law? Friends, I want to encourage you this morning. One of the ways that you can honor your mother is to listen to her and not just to obey her and do what she tells you to do but really to take the time to get to know who she is and what she's all about. To say, hey mom, how are you doing? How's your day? What's going on in your world? Or what are you thinking about? What are you excited about? What are you, what are you worried about? I wanna challenge you this morning to take more time to listen to the mothers in your life. Now, a third way that you can honor your mother this morning is to help her. You know, some of the greatest helpers in the world are mothers, amen? <laughs> wow, I mean, not only do they change diapers, they, they clean up messes, they help with homework, they do all these sorts of things, 
And you know what? At the end of the day, they even help us as adults. I mean, our mothers are some of the greatest helpers in the world. You know, one time when Abigail was really young, she had this really high fever. And the medicine wasn't really working. It wasn't bringing the fever down. And here was Elaine, and she was hugging our daughter and doing whatever she could to help keep her comfortable. And I'm standing there like a typical dad, a hot mess, not knowing what to do. And Elaine said, hey, Chris, what, what should we do? Should we take her to the hospital? Can you, can you call somebody and find out? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'll do that. So I went to the other room. I came back, and she said, well, what did the doctor on call say? And I said, um, I didn't talk to the doctor. And she said, you didn't talk to the doctor. Who did you call? Friends, you know who I called? I called my mom, right? Because in my mind, my mom was the one who could help in this situation, it's not that the doctor couldn't help. The reason I called my mom was because she had helped me in so many situations throughout my life. You see, friends, one of the ways that you can honor your mother is to help her. And sometimes the best way to do that is to simply ask. To say, Mom, how can I help you? Can I help you with those dishes? Or can I help you move that furniture? Can I help you set up Alexa? How can I help you? You know what? Sometimes you may not even need to ask. She may have some things that she needs your help with. She may have a list. And friends, if I could just speak to the teenagers and the younger children in the room for just a moment here. When your mom asks you to do something, don't roll your eyes. <laughs> don't huff and puff. Don't act like she just asked you to do the biggest thing in the world. Your mom has been helping you your entire life. And therefore, the few times that she asks you for help, you don't have to be rude. Instead, you can honor your mother by showing kindness and respect to the woman who brought you into this world. Okay, I want to challenge you this morning. Ask your mom, how can I help you? Now, a fourth way that you can honor your mother, take a look, is to forgive her. You know, our moms forgive us all the time, don't they? Sometimes we say things, sometimes we do things, sometimes we don't do things. As children, sometimes we hurt our moms. And yet they forgive us because they love us. For example, when I was about 14 or 15 years old, one day my mom came and picked me up after school. It was her day off, and, and I, I got to the car, and as a 14 or 15-year-old boy, at that stage of my life, I was always hungry. Like, I was a garbage disposal, just eating and eating and eating. And so I got into the car, I sat down, and my mom had done something really thoughtful and considerate. You know what she did? She got me a Publix sub. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's been a long day. And I opened it up, and I went to go take a bite. And I, I, as, as I did, I stopped, and I threw it back down on the wrapper. Now, there's something you may not know about me. There are five different types of food that I do not like to eat. You ready for these? Seafood as a whole category, mushrooms, whole tomatoes, cottage cheese, and mayonnaise. Now, at the 8 o'clock service, this sweet lady, she brought me this bag this morning. She said, oh, I brought you some things from the market. I thought you'd like it. I opened it up. You know what it was? Whole tomatoes. <laughs> she then listened to the sermon, and she's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, don't worry. Elaine and our girls love whole tomatoes. It's fine. Now, the reason I put the sandwich down was because when I went to go take a bite, it had what? It had mayonnaise on it. And so I, I, I threw it down. You know what I said? I was like, Mom, oh, this, this sandwich has mayonnaise on it. I mean, this is gross. There's no way that I'm eating this. And I wrapped it up and I tossed it to the side. Now, think about this for a moment. On her day off, my mom drove to Publix. She went inside. She waited in line. She ordered my sub. She paid for my sub. She brought it knowing that I would be hungry after school. My mom did all of those things. And yet here I was at 14, 15 years old. I was so consumed by the fact that there was mayonnaise on it. But I didn't see any of that. I mean, instead of being grateful, I was anything but grateful. But friends, you know what that day, in the midst of my ungratefulness, you know what my mom did? She forgave me. In fact, she's been forgiving me every single day of my life. You know, I recognize this morning that some of you here today might not have or might not have had the best relationship with your mom. Like when I said that our moms love us and listen to us and help us, maybe you were thinking, you know what, my mom isn't like that. Or my mom wasn't like that. 
But you know what? Here's the thing. Whether you have a strong relationship with your mom or an estranged relationship with your mom, the reality is that all of our moms are not perfect. Sometimes they make mistakes. Sometimes they say things and do things that hurt us. In other words, our moms are just like you and I, sinful people in need of a Savior. You know, when Jesus walked on this earth, he said something that was so powerful that it has resonated around the world for thousands of years. Take a look at what he said. He said, your sins are forgiven. Friends, the gospel, the good news, the reason why all of us are gathered here today is because of those four words right there, amen? That in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, my sins are forgiven, the person sitting next to you sins are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, And therefore, when we gather together, there is power when you and I hear those words. And friends, the same is true in our own lives. There is power when your mom hears from your mouth that you forgive her. When you say, Mom, I know you made a mistake, or I know you said something that hurt me, or I know you did something that hurt me, but I forgive you because I love you. I love you like Jesus loves me. You see, friends, one of the ways that you can honor your mother is to forgive her just as Christ has forgiven you. And then finally this morning, a fifth way that you can honor your mother is to consider her. You know, as our moms get older, and we get older, they don't stop being our moms, do they? Like you could be 70-something, your mom could be 90-something, she's still your mom. And here's the thing, because many of us are no longer kids... You'd think that your mom kind of moves on with life, but no, she still considers you all the time. For example, she she thinks about you, she prays for you, she reaches out to you, she calls you, she, she touches base with you. I mean, so many ways our moms consider us all the time. You know, at night, one of the stories that Elaine likes to read to our girls is a story called The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. And it's this beautiful story about this boy and a tree, and the tree represents the boy's mom. And when the boy is young, he hangs out at this tree all the time. He climbs on the tree. He grabs the apples from the tree. He lives his life around this tree. But then one day he gets a little older and he leaves the tree. And he's gone for a long time. And one day he comes back as a teenager and he goes to the tree and he tells the tree that he needs money. And you know what? The tree is so excited that he considered her. And so the the tree offers up all of the apples that he can take to the market and sell so he can get some money. And so this teenage boy, he gathers up all the apples, he takes them to the market, and he's gone for a really long time. And then one day he returns, and he's now a, a young man, a young adult, and he comes to this tree and he tells the tree that he needs some wood in order to build his house. And you know what, the tree, she is so delighted that he considered her. And so what does she do? She she offers up her very tree, her very self. He chops down the tree. He takes the tree and goes and builds the house. And all that's left is a stump. And again, he's gone for a really long time. And finally, this young man now comes back as an old man. He's walking with a cane and he's tired. And he goes and he turns to the stump and asks if he can sit and rest. And friends, guess what? The stump is so excited that he considered her. And the story ends with the old man sitting down and resting on that stump. And friends, the message of the story is that not only do moms give everything for their children, but they are so thankful when their children take the time to consider them. You know, I also recognize that for some of you here today, Mother's Day might be an actual pretty tough day for you because it's a reminder that your mom is no longer with you. As much as the years go on, it doesn't seem to change how you feel. You still miss her. You still love her. You still want to see her again. And friends, I pray if this is your situation this morning, I pray that the peace of Christ is with you in the midst of those feelings. Because you know what? If you've lost a mother, you know better than any of us here that our time with our moms is limited. And therefore, as children and grandchildren, we need to make the most of every opportunity that we have with our mom. And so I want to challenge you this morning, one of the ways that you can honor your mom is to consider her, to to involve her in your world. 
For example, take her to the baseball game, or invite her to the recital, or take her out to dinner, invite her on the road trip. Call her, write her, take the time to consider the woman who has spent so much of her life considering you. You see, friends, today on this Mother's Day, we, we celebrate our moms. And I pray that your celebrations today go well. At the very same time, we are also commanded by our God to honor our moms every single day. And friends, in the, in the words of Martin Luther, what does this mean? We can do that by, by loving them, by listening to them, by helping them, by forgiving them, and by considering them. These are the things that our moms have done for us. And friends, this morning, you and I can both glorify God and honor our mothers by doing the very same things for them. To Jesus be all the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks this morning for the mothers and mother figures in our lives. We give thanks that you give us people who can support us and raise us, encourage us, be there for us in times of need. And Lord, today we celebrate them. We celebrate these wonderful women and all of the wonderful ways that they continue to be a presence in our lives. But Lord, you also remind us with your Ten Commandments that we are to honor our mother. That we walk through life not just celebrating them on one day, but we faithfully honor them every single day of our lives. And so, Lord, this morning, we, we ask that you would help us to honor our mothers every single day, to take the time to love them, to tell them, to show them that we love them. That we would take the time to listen to them, to find out what's going on in their world. What are they thinking about? What are they worried about? What are they excited about? We pray that we would also take the time to help them, that we would recognize, especially as they get older, that there are some things that they need help with. Lord, we also ask that you would help us to forgive our moms for the times that they have fallen short as a reminder of the own ways that we have fallen short too. Lord, we also ask this morning that you would help us to consider our moms. And Lord Jesus, when you were hanging on the cross on that Good Friday, the very last thing before you did was you considered your mother. You turned to John and you turned to your mother and you said, here is your mother, here is your son. In your final act, you made sure to take care of your mother. You considered her in your moment of direst need. And Lord, we pray this morning that that would be the same for us, that we would continue to consider our moms, especially if they are with us today. And Lord, if we have lost moms in the process, we, we, we pray for the folks today that are experiencing that, that you would give them your peace. Lord, help us to remind ourselves every day through your Holy Spirit that we are to honor the people that you have given us, who have given us life through you. Lord, we pray these things this morning by praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We want to thank you for worshiping with us today. Uh, next week, we're going to have our eighth grade commencement, our recognition at our eight o'clock service. And then we're going to have our confirmation here at 10 a.m. as well. We're going to have about eight or nine eighth graders who are going to be professing their faith in Jesus Christ. So we hope you'll join us for that next week. Uh, if you would like to give this morning, we have now a bowl in the back. Scott East, one of our members here, he's a master craftsman. He actually handcrafted that bowl. Thank you, Scott, for that. Uh, you can drop your offering on the way out today if you would like to do that. Or if you would like to give, you can give at OurSaviorFL.org. You can also text to give, and we are also on Venmo. As we celebrate and honor the mothers in our lives this morning, let's stand as we continue our worship of our God today. <laughs> 